Okay. Well, I'm not here. Uh, by here, I mean there, because I am here, but here is not there. So, unfortunately, I'm home with a sick kid today, but I wanted to send you a quick video and talk a little bit about what you're going to do in class today, and then also about the next book you're going to read, which is called A Mercy. So, first of all, I put a new Google Doc in today's Schoology folder where if you wouldn't mind, I would like you to put your group members' names in one column and then a link to the podcast itself in another column and then a link to your script in another column. Um, I received about 80 messages and emails from people with links to all kinds of things and I think this will make my life a lot easier if I can just have it each class all in one doc. So I appreciate that. Um, and I think we're going to do, uh, at some point next week, um, give you an opportunity to listen to some, some of the podcasts that other people did. So having those all in one place will make, uh, things easier for that too. Um, so today you're going to get your next book. It's called a mercy. Actually, even before that, um, you know, once you get your book and you're done watching this little video and the other Toni Morrison activity, if your group is not done with their podcast, you could keep working on that today, right? So if you need to record, you can be, um, out in the hallway uh, as long as you are close to the door um, and uh, not messing around. So uh, very briefly I want to talk about uh, A Mercy. A Mercy's a tough book. Um, Toni Morrison is a brilliant writer. Um, it's not tough like Scarlet Letter in that you will, you know, it's not full of big words and, and weird phrasing and long, long, long winded sentences. Um, the tricky part with A Mercy is that it's told out of order. Right. And so even though the time period is, you know, roughly where we are and have kind of been maybe even a little bit earlier than that uh, in American history, it was written and I published, I believe, in 2008. Right. So the writing is much more contemporary, even though the time period is is uh, early, almost pre-America, essentially. Um, now, when you read it, um, you know, I tried to make the reading assignments fairly small. We're going to do 13 pages a day. And once you see the book, the font is large, right? So um, I think you will be able to get through it without too much difficulty, and, and uh, I will make sure to give you whatever assistance we need. So just a couple things. If you open up your book and take a look at chapter one, what you're going to notice is that chapter one is told in first person present tense. Somebody is writing this now, right? And another thing you can notice is the style of writing in which it's done is um, this is someone writing who, for whom English is their second language, right? And, and actually Portuguese is their first language. And incidentally, several years ago, I had a student who, uh, whose mother was from Portugal, and he said at the time that he thought that the translation from Portuguese to English sounded authentic, right? Like the way somebody who is a native Portuguese speaker might speak English. So anyway, each odd number chapter, one, three, five, and so on, uh, is told first person, one character's perspective, and her name is Florence. Uh, in Florence chapter, we are going to jump around a lot in this first chapter, right? We're going to get several different stories that she kind of references, and this is how she ends up coming to live at this guy's farm, okay? So in the beginning, this first chapter, it's going to jump around a lot. Right, and they're going to be referencing things that we don't know about yet as until we read the book. We're going to watch another interview with Toni Morrison a little bit later where she talks about the book of Mercy specifically, and she said it was kind of intentional, right? Sometimes when movies start right in the middle of the action or something going on and uh, the audience is left to kind of figure out what's going on, that can be a way to hook people to, to want to keep, you know, reading your book or watching your movie. So anyway... Chapter one is told from the perspective of Florence, right? And it's first person present tense. And then when you start chapter two, you're going to get a little ways into chapter two. You're going to notice that it is uh, third person now, and we are out of that kind of Portuguese to English translation. Okay. Now, the way the book works, odd number chapters are Florence chapters. Even number chapters are each going to focus on one of the main characters. Okay. So for instance, chapter two is focused on Jacob. Jacob's story, as the author tells us this story in chapter two, we're also going to learn some bits and pieces about the other characters, right? And then chapter three, we go back to Florence. And then chapter four, I forget off the top of my head, but I, I want to say uh, the uh, Jacob's wife named Rebecca. It's either Rebecca or Lena, one of the two. Anyway, we get another character's story, right? And then in learning her story, we also learn some more about the other characters, right? So we're going to kind of keep coming back and revisiting events from different characters' perspectives, right? So what we'll do pretty early on when we read this is put together a chronology, put together a timeline, right? And then kind of lay out the major events in the story on it so that then once you're reading, 
and then it <clears throat> refers back to specific parts or specific stories, you'll have kind of a sense of where we are in the timeline of the story, right? Because it's not exactly told from the beginning of the story to the end. So that's about all I got for you. Okay, so you are going to read page four to page 17. The book starts on page four. That's why we're beginning there. Um, so watch the Toni Morrison video. It's short, it's like four minutes, um, but it, you will get points for doing it on my Ed Puzzle. And then get going on your reading. If you get done with this video and the Toni Morrison video and then the reading, um, if you wanna have other things to work on that are more pressing, you could certainly do that. Uh, you might also take a look at Student Portal and see if there's any assignments that you're missing that you could get made up. So if you have any questions, you can send me an email throughout the day. And uh, other than that, I hope you have a good day. Uh, be excellent young students for the substitute. And uh, have an excellent weekend. Thanks.